So let, let's start uh, the rest of this lecture. Um, just a quick remark because of the discussions we had in, in the break. It's good to mention again that uh, I already mentioned that be, with this uh, aug uh, augmented Lagrangian term, you get this uh, penalty, uh, quadratic penalty term, which helps a lot, especially for cases that you have functions that are not really differentiable or not even uh, continuous. Then you, you, you uh, then it will be uh, well uh, behaved in terms of the dual, and then you get uh, um, some. You can uh, evaluate your uh, minimization of the Lagrangian uh, in a better form, and uh, yeah, often you you end up even with closed forms, uh, but not necessarily. So each each of the sub problems actually in in the so and ADMM inherits that naturally, right? Because it's just uh, augmented Lagrangian, but uh, doing a step by step uh, for two, uh, at least for two uh, separating uh, or splitted variables. Um, and then, uh, so we recognize again that the pattern is uh, a generaliz generalization actually with respect to the prox operators. If we put uh, A and B equal to I identity, then you get uh, the prox operator. And then in general, it is just a, um, a weighted norm case of the prox operator. Um, and yeah, so even for, for example, in these two cases that we, uh, if we didn't have this uh, augmented term or penalty term, then uh, it would have been very difficult to minimize with respect to x and uh, x. Uh, but with this uh, augmented term, uh, it ends up being uh, well behaved. <clears throat> and in, in practice, it's, it helps a lot for convergence as a, uh, as I said before. Um, so let's talk a little bit for, about the convergence of the ADMM method uh, without really getting to the details because it can be one or a couple of lectures uh, by its own, one lecture at least. <laughs> um, so th there are two assumptions here for the most generic uh, case of ADMM that we discussed, uh, that you have no assumption uh, on the A and B uh, kind of matrices. Uh, the only assumptions are uh, like on the F and G, which, is, which says that they are closed, proper, and convex. What it means is basically that uh, is the epigraph um, of the function, which is a super graph. Uh, like if you have the graph of the function, um, let's if that's the function f, then the area above the function is called the epigraph of f. Then this set is the convex and closed. Um, so that is much milder assumption compared to the convex uh, uh, continuity and the normal assumptions that you have in the in the gradient case the subgradient methods uh, and the second assumption is uh, that there is a saddle point exists basically what it means is that your your uh, problem has a solution it's by definition is is not uh, the set of solutions is not empty so and and you recognize that these assumptions are not really uh, tight, so very, very generic. Um, so under these two assumptions, the strong duality holds for ADMM, and in particular, there are no assumptions on A and B. As long as you have solution to the original problem, ADMM can work for, for this type of problems. Uh, then the next question is uh, how it works, right? <laughs> how good is the convergence? It could be, it can be very poor uh, because we have a very mild assumption, so it contains a lot of uh, classes of problems. Um, but then the question of the how it converges boils boils down to the specific classes of problem that there are specific and results related to those. That we will review some of those. But uh, in, in its most general format that uh, we spoke up to now, the convergence is established with respect to the, some residuals. As you see, this is the primal 
uh, residual, the pr uh, primal constraint, the constraint uh, that we have in the problem. And there is uh, also another one uh, which captures the dual, but here I just, for simplicity, we look at this one. Uh, so the, the convergence result of the ADMM is established with respect to this type of variable, uh, residual, and also the cost function, the, the objective. So when it converges, the objective converges to optimality to, or saddle point of the problem, one of the saddle, not necessarily unique, and the residuals diminishes, it goes to zero. So by, by, by this statement, does it mean that we converge with, with respect to X or Z? No, right? Because it doesn't say so. It just say that we converge with respect to residuals and uh, the cost function. But I think in practice it is good enough because you you will uh, if you, you in practice you set a tolerance uh, for your algorithms and then you, if you are under some uh, like if your residuals are under certain uh, value that is not pretty high ten to the minus two or three then it's very good for many practical problems. Um, yeah, in practice it's it's good enough. Uh, but it can, it's easy also to build uh, examples that it uh, uh, behaves very poorly, so it, it converges very slowly. Um, but in, in practice, yeah, we will see some examples as well. Let's see more specific uh, results in terms of the convergence, or more stronger results in terms of convergence and convergence rate, is established, of course, for some subset of problems. For example, if you have a QP problems like this, standard QP, then immediately one can convert it to the ADM format. And that's by the introducing a Z variable here and uh, an indicator function which penalize Z to be in the positive side and the positive orthant and converting this uh, AX uh, smaller than or equal to C to the equality case. So that is a trick you do for uh, uh, covering the inequality constraints, linear uh, affine. And if you implement, go and implement this uh, QP with uh, positive def definite Hessian matrix, meaning that uh, Q doesn't have any uh, zero eigenvalue, then uh, the result shows that you can establish a linear rate. What it means is, Again, in terms of residuals here, uh, the, the primary residual converges to zero at the rate of so-called uh, linear rate. And in particular, you have some parameter gamma that is, uh, uh, contains between zero and one. And when you go further with, uh, in terms of k, you do more iteration, it becomes smaller and smaller, and eventually it vanishes, and your uh, residual becomes smaller and smaller in a, at a linear rate. <clears throat> there, there are also results about the, the optimal choices of the parameters. Uh, in this case, you can, here is the, the best case, best uh, uh, row that one can pick. And it's always fixed, it's constant for, for this class. And it's uh, equal to one divided by square root of uh, lambda min times lambda max. And lambda min and lambda max are the eigenvalues of this matrix. A, Q inverse, A transpose. Yeah, it's a bit not uh, straightforward, but uh, if you play with the, the iterations and convert it to, to, um, to some um, residual uh, dynamics, then you, then, yeah, you can find this one. Um, and then the, the, the optimal rate of convergence, like uh, factor, right, sorry, the rate is linear. But the, op the best or smallest gamma uh, will be achieved by setting rho to this value. And then you get, this is somehow kappa minus one, kappa plus one, where kappa is the condition number of, with respect to this uh, problem. So this Hessian, let's say. So Q is the Hessian of the, the, the cost function. But if you look, this is somehow like the Hessian of the real problem that you are solving with respect to the X and Z. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so, but, but, but uh, here, the, the immediately we, we can recognize from these equations that here we, we uh, no longer, uh, the result is uh, general for A, because in, uh, A needs to be full row rank, because uh, you shouldn't lose any rank here. Otherwise, this uh, value goes to zero, or immediate consequence is the gamma approaches to one, uh, because this can go to infinity, for example, in that case. Uh, but uh, of course, you cannot set th this result hold for the values larger than zero, not exactly zero. But you can uh, make like closer to zero, like epsilon, and you see that it becomes closer and closer to one, meaning that this rate will be slower. Uh, it can make, make uh, arbitrary slow when you get uh, closer to values equal to zero for lambda mean of this value. Um, and of course, it has been also generalized to more general cases, uh, like more loose um, uh, convergence factors can be achieved uh, compared to the QP when you generalize it to the uh, cost functions with smooth and strongly convex. This is typically the, the language when you, you, you want to prove the convergence for uh, gradient-based algorithms uh, if you want to have some tractable. Uh, result, but in, in ADMM, we, we don't need all of this, right? But if you have a function like that, then you, you, you have a linear rate of convergence. Uh, and you can check that this one is somewhat generalization of the previous <laughs> values, like L and mu are uh, like upper bound and lower bounds are uh, the inverse of, on the Q. Um, argue, uh, the eigenvalues of Q when you have a QP, but in general case, there's a typo here as well, uh, when you have a smooth and uh, strongly convex function, then basically it means that you have a, a, a lower bound and upper bound of quadratic type that is uh, on, on your cost function. For example, a linear function doesn't satisfy this one, but the quadratics always satisfy uh, this kind of condition. So, um, yeah, I think if you are interested, you can follow the results in the, the references. Mm -hmm. Another uh, trick or result here that is also interesting to, to mention is that there are other uh, hyperparameters in this algorithm that one can apply. Uh, another one is called the relaxation, so-called relaxation. It's a kind of a linear averaging between uh, two terms in the, the residual, in the primary residual. So, uh, if we have a parameter called alpha, and it, it can be proved it should be between, between zero and two to, to for, for the whole ADMM to be still stable, uh, then you can replace uh, A x k plus one in the Z and the Lagrange update uh, formulas with this uh, parameter. So it takes some part of A x k plus one and other parts of uh, the other part of the uh, the primal residual. And in practice, uh, so if, if alpha k is larger than one, it's called uh, over relaxation, and is uh, smaller than one, it's called under relaxation. Theoretical best values is surprisingly equal, very simply it's equal to two, even though we don't have it uh, inclusion for general case, but it can be equal to two for the same set of good, good functions, let's say. If you have L smooth and uh, mu strongly convex function F, then uh, th there are certain monotonicity in terms of alpha in your uh, convergence rate that you can optimize your uh, factor, convergence factor, when you are exactly at uh, uh, alpha at two. Otherwise, in practice, if you don't have this uh, kind of luxury, then you, the typical values, uh, empirical values between 1.5 uh, and 1.8 has shown uh, benefits in practice. So these are based on practical uh, evaluations. Uh, another uh, aspect that we spoke also in the break uh, is that sometimes it's, it's good to have uh, uh, time varying uh, penalties especially in the, in the beginning of the, the, the optimization, uh, when you start, you can have uh, larger steps. 
uh, we can see it as a, because rho is also a Lagrange, uh, the, the step size in the Lagrange update. So in th that case, we can be more aggressive in terms of violation. But when it comes uh, closer and closer to optimality, then maybe it's better to have a smaller values. Of course, uh, setting this uh, time varying uh, step sizes, we don't get this uh, dual feasibility uh, that we discussed before. But in practice, it has been shown that it works uh, quite well. Uh, in particular, here is if uh, there is this very simple scheme that can uh, update rho based on the residuals. If we look at to the R, which was the primary residual that we discussed before, and here is the uh, dual residual that we didn't speak before, but it's uh, also the convergence is also uh, tied to these two residuals. So meaning that, I mean, if, if uh, R and S here are uh, going to zero me uh, means that our algorithm is converging. So we can control the behavior of the algorithm with these two residual. If it's, uh, the ratio uh, is more than some delta value, then you can increase or decrease. And if it's in between, then you, you keep it fixed for, to the previous one. Uh, a typical example is uh, when delta is, uh, oops, I think I missed, uh, 10, and you increase and decrease by, uh, by twice, setting it twice or halving the, the row. Uh, so now we go to the last part of this uh, lecture, and that's the application part. As I said before, there are uh, several areas that ADMM has been applied in uh, learning, in control, in optimization, um, yeah, and multi-agent, of course. Uh, but here, I just took some examples, uh, like only two, one example in two setup, uh, and uh, that is the consensus problem or consensus optimization that is uh, very common. Uh, both in machine learning and also multi-agent cases. And then we look at in two different setup, uh, not much different. The first setup is when we have a master worker uh, setup, and the second setup is we don't have any centralized node. So it's entirely decentralized. Uh, we don't have the master node. Mm, and here is uh, uh, some examples. For example, if uh, we want to look at to that kind of minimization problem, uh, the sum of some terms, uh, fi's, and uh, basically x is a parameter, or we can look at it in, in terms of the, uh, a lot of the machine learning uh, applications. If you have a training data of ai and bi, uh, and so we, we can split in, uh, in, in different ways in, into different uh, machines, and it basically it's because Maybe they are physically related to different subset of the, uh, the system, or they are too big, so we have to split them in a way. Uh, th there are also uh, the, the examples of the, the FI are lasso, for example. In that case, uh, here I, I just, uh, the or, uh, minimization parameter uh, is x is only a vector. So, but it can be generalized to the matrix case as well. So for simplicity, we look at to the uh, vector case. Uh, by, and also we only look at to the, um, uh, yeah, bi will be a scalar in that case. Yeah, I was uh, mentioning here that since x is a vector here, then we get uh, also vectors of the training data. And bi is a, a, a scalar in this case, but it can be uh, also applied to the matrix case. Uh, the first example is, is so-called lasso minimization, which is a, a regression term uh, applied to uh, the training data plus uh, L1 regularization term. It's be exactly fit with, with our definition with uh, ADMM, right? Here uh, we have one type of function, that's another fine. So if you just replace x, uh, one of them with z, we get the, very directly, we get the ADMM formulation. And the idea behind this uh, loss of minimization is, uh, in fact, you have um, way too many features uh, than, than the, 
the training examples and you you want to be uh, kind of uh, economical with uh, with the uh, features that you you choose for uh, regression and that comes from the l1 minimization so sparsifying your feature vector based on your training data that can be very spanned uh, to the large spaces a uh, second type of example that fits to this model that we consider here uh, is the classification, binary classification problems. Uh, when B is a label with plus minus or is a positive negative zero one binary decision, if it's a, like a case of a disease, then uh, it, your training data will be some known data set that if it's uh, favorable or uh, negative with some tests and uh, AIs are the features of your problem. Um, so, and, and here we have a loss function, which let's say in, uh, in classification can be a lot of options. You have hinge, uh, logistic, etc. functions. And, uh, and also, so here, here is the cost function. Uh, you have, again, your AI and BIs as a training data. You want to find the classifier or uh, the feature that classifies plus some uh, also uh, bias parameter. And here we just look at to the linear, <laughs> linear classifier, very simple. And uh, here is the uh, R or uh, regularization term. Uh, a famous example is uh, the SVM so-called, which you, uh, your minimization your L function or your cost has this uh, kind of a max uh, operator. Uh, and what it does is basically it, uh, if your decision or if your uh, predictor is in favor of the label, then uh, you have a minimum uh, uh, cost, which is zero. Uh, if it's not, then you have a cost. And you, uh, you also smoothify it with some uh, L2 norm with lambda is a constant. So it's usually, I think it's pra uh, em empirically set. So you do uh, a lot of tests uh, like uh, in the uh, cross validation and then you come up with the best lambda that fits to your data. Uh, okay, so these are type of examples uh, that or uh, algorithm that we are about to design will cover. Uh, so the first setup was uh, the consensus optimization, as I said, and here we just assume here is a very direct way of converting uh, this problem to the ADMM format, which is adding a auxiliary variable called Z uh, and then setting Xi minus Z equal to zero. And Z is, this, um, uh, is, is a global variable, which is kept in the central node, and we call it as a consistency or consensus. And uh, if you have uh, this uh, additional uh, regularization term here, then we can also add it here and then set Z inside that, as you say, GZ, right? Very well. Um, and here, here comes the consensus algorithm for ADMM. Um, so your augmented Lagrangian becomes this sum, summation of FIX plus yi transpose xi minus z, this is the constraint violation term, and plus the penalty term, the quadratic penalty term. And of course, uh, it will be added with the g of z if you have uh, the regularization. And th the first step of ADMM will be minimizing the res respect to xi, and second step with respect to z, if we have this nice form, it's kind of averaging, right? So you average xi plus yi, one uh, divided by rho times yi. And you have the Lagrange update. Uh, of course, uh, th this term will be replaced with the prox operator uh, when we have a regularization. Uh, because uh, remember, when you have the constraint matrix equal to identity, then you recover a prox operator, which is the case uh, here if you have uh, a regularization uh, term of L1, L2. Um, 
so actually there, there is a simplification that you, one can do here uh, and that is if you sum up yi is here over entire uh, network or all the nodes then you can do it as a practice is very uh, straightforward then you 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 reach to the uh, conclusion that if you set y uh, zero equal to zero y i of zero uh, at time zero equal to zero then you re recover uh, this one at each iteration it will be it remains at zero the summation and then you can remove this uh, term this summation term wherever it, it exists uh, like here uh, in, in the equation, and yet then you get uh, really to the much simpler format. And that's because your Z uh, iteration uh, or uh, sub-problem will become really just uh, averaging. So your uh, worker node will take all the, uh, so how it, this is how it works. At step uh, xi k plus one, you receive yi k, uh, k and xi uh, from in parallel. So sorry, you calculate uh, this and yi and xi because y is also splitted to the to the workers to the nodes. Sorry, uh, and then you do it, uh, this update in parallel, but you use the global variable, uh, the consensus variable. Uh, that is in the nodes, and then uh, in the master node, on the central node, gathers all the xi's, uh, and only xi's, from the processors and computes the average, and distributed back, scatters back to the, to the all the nodes. So it's uh, exactly like a MapReduce uh, architecture. Uh, and here, here is the one example that I did uh, Last night, with help of <laughs> was saying that if 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 you remember with, with a simple problem, a toy problem uh, of SVM that we just discussed, right? Um, so if for, th this is for the case when we have uh, AIs like this, uh, training data is only two dimensional, dimension one and dimension two, and then uh, there are we have four hundred points, and they are. Uh, uh, constructed in a way that there are uh, like these are the plus and minus like plus one and minus one uh, values and uh, for for this uh, test we, uh, I have done in a very like uh, split it in a worst way possible so you give all the examples with the plus to one node and all the example with the minus uh, label to the other node so they don't know anything they just uh, have the data that is either plus one uh, as a label or minus one. And we, uh, we want to see how <laughs> good they can do with only uh, averaging uh, when they do. And here is a, a result after, I guess, 60 iterations of ADMM. But you should uh, remember here, the iterations are really cheap uh, for each uh, data because it's, uh, you have a prox operators and it's a closed form. Um, so after only 60 iterations over, uh, let's say, the ADMM iteration and primal and dual residuals R and S that we discussed go below 10 to minus 2. And here is the regressor or classifier, which is not that bad. But I wouldn't use it in practice on <laughs> if we, unless we do more tests on that. Uh, the second type of applications that we look into are the same setup of consensus problem, but now we don't have any central node, so it's it should be totally di uh, distributed. If we imagine that there is no uh, server node that can do a, a, a consensus or averaging for us, how we can handle this uh, problem? Sometimes it it will be it becomes uh, naturally because uh, if imagine you have a diff like Google for example, you have data in different parts of the world and. Perhaps you don't want to shuffle them around uh, to make uh, averaging. Uh, so you just want to, to, uh, to, to do the in a decentralized way. There are uh, at least two, two ways that I am aware of, of formulating this problem, to, uh, uh, the consensus problem to uh, a network problem or a graph problem. This is uh, the node variable. This is called the, uh, sorry, the edge variable uh, formulation. Uh, basically, what you do uh, 
is that for each node, so for each edge between i and j, this is node i and node j. So uh, in the edge node, uh, in the edge variable formulation, you define uh, auxiliary variable i and j on the on each edge of the network, and that's what you see here. So, uh, if you remember, before we had only one z variable to make this uh, master worker setup. But for this setup, we have to create more auxiliary variables. Uh, xi will be equal to zi and j for all the neighboring nodes that uh, you have. So for each label, uh, sorry, for each edge in the graph that i is sharing, it should be the variable of x should be equal to zij. And of course, this is uh, obvious because uh, I just wrote it here to make sure that we understand this is an undirected graph, so it's not directed graph. Uh, so zij is uh, symmetric, is equal to zji. Uh, so this is called the edge variable. There is another way, uh, it is called the node variable that you, the auxiliary variable now is uh, inside node, each node. And then, uh, then x z in this case z i should be equal to x. Let's say j and j is uh, i union with all the neighboring nodes of i. So it, it's it's uh, another way of formulating the same problem, but with a different set of uh, variables. I just here follow this formulation. Um, Again, xi's are the same, local variables as before. We have zij's that are called the auxiliary edge variables, which are kept locally. So these are also locally uh, at each node. But zij is uh, like, in, now we have two copies of it, one in node i and one in node j. And we have to make them equal at each, each uh, iteration. Uh, there are other ways also to formulate, the, as I said, the node formulation. Doing so, then you can write again the same uh, augmented Lagrangian, but, but with the new set of variables. This is the constraint violation terms, sum over all the nodes and also all the neighbors of node i. And the same goes here, right? Then the resulting ADMM we can write, and it's, it's, in fact, it is separable. We can see that it splits over nodes, but it's more complicated now with zij than before. So you have to get xi and xj. So th there are two averages for, it, I think, in a way, it is intuitive, because since the, uh, we share this zij between node i and j, uh, it runs two, aver two averaging at the same time, average over x's and y's of, for both, node i and j. And yeah, we have also the normal business of the Lagrange uh, updates. And of course, if you have a regularization, we have to figure out that one as well as a prox operator. But here it will be a bit more trickier because you have uh, now uh, a, a cost function which is quadratic plus uh, two, um, two prox terms, two uh, penalty terms. Because if we enforce that ij equal to zji, then you have to solve it at the same time. And then you get two uh, variables. So it means it should be close to a, uh, another, uh, if you have <laughs> xi and xj. So at the same time, it should be close to both. So it's uh, uh, doable. You can do it as a practice if you want. Um, and believe me, after doing a lot of tricks, <laughs> it, this has been an active uh, uh, field of research for the, like I think, I think three, four, year, three years ago at least. I don't know if there are still papers on that, but uh, they are all about how to really formulate this uh, ADMM, 
how to optimize its performance because now you 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 have uh, more factors right you have your graph your uh, communication graph into the picture as well uh, and and also you can think of um, another tricks for example when you have this uh, z i and j as a as a uh, consensus or auxiliary variable you can add uh, extra um, degree of freedom in terms of scaling you can scale your constraint on the network and be putting different weights on different label uh, different edges of your network you can also uh, enforce uh, behavior to your convergence meaning that if you have uh, some strong links then you add more values to the more uh, importance to the values that they they bring in uh, uh, as an update that compared to the case that you have a very uh, low connected node that has a very uh, slow rate of uh, update in, in from its neighbors so th there are many ideas uh, can be done in this uh, regard but just following the very simple uh, the, the same formulation that i did uh, we look at before without any extra flavor then we can uh, simplify and get to this kind of equation what it basically says that uh, so i put it in the subgradient term but of course you understand this is applicable when f is uh, uh, differentiable as well uh, with the gradient then uh, in the X min uh, xi minimization, uh, every node uh, solves this equation. And here, as you see, this, the number of uh, neighbors that each node has uh, has uh, important impacts also in the equation. And here, the same here as well. And I just said that different topologies really will uh, play a role here in the convergence of the, the algorithm. And in fact, uh, th there are uh, works also done in these references you can, for, for reference you can refer, that how to evaluate on the network and also, uh, and how to uh, optimize also your network. Um, yeah, in, in terms of uh, getting the best performance of the ADMM in the network. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it.